Good evening and welcome to this evening office. The service of evening prayer begins on page 63 of the Book of Common Prayer with the Invitatory and Psalter. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing thy praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thou art worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 77 and can be found on page 693 of the Book of Common Prayer. And we will read aloud together verses 11 through 15. I will remember the works of the Lord and, and call, call to mind your wonders, wonders of old time. time. I, I will meditate on all your acts and, and ponder your, your mighty deeds. Your, your way, O oh God, is holy, who and is so great a God as our God. You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. By your strength you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Timothy. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is written, that is within you, through the line, laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord, or of me, his prisoner. But join me in suffering from the gospel, relying on the power of God. <clears throat> who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but has now been revealed through the appealing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher and for this reason I suffer as I do. But I am not ashamed, for I know this one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please join with me in reciting the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat, and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath opened his servant Israel, as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled under the feet. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. 
No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstead, and it gives light to all of the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For only I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the, of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please join with me in saying the Nunc Dimittis, the song of Simeon. Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according, according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, to be a light to enlighten the Gentiles, and to be the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth. Thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O Lord our God, grant that thy church, following the teaching of thy servant Leo of Rome, may hold fast the great mystery of our redemption, and adore the one Christ, true God and true man, neither divided from our human nature, nor separate from thy divine being. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know thee as thou art revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of thy love. Amen. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give thine angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for thy love's sake. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Today we commemorate Leo of Rome, 
When Leo was born in the year 400, the Western Roman Empire was almost in shambles, weakened by barbarian invasions and by a totally inefficient economic and political system. The structure that had been carefully built by Augustus had become a chaos of internal warfare, subversion, and corruption. The social and political situation notwithstanding, Leo received a good education and was ordained as a deacon with the responsibility of looking after church possessions, managing the distribution of food, and generally administering the finances. He won considerable respect for his abilities, and a contemporary of his, Cassian, described him as the ornament of the Roman Church and the divine ministry. In 440, Leo was unanimously elected Pope, despite the fact that he was absent at the time on a mission in Gaul. His ability as a preacher shows clearly in the 96 sermons still extant, in which he expounds doctrine, encourages almsgiving, and refutes various heresies. In Gaul, Africa, and Spain, Leo's strong hand was felt as he issued orders to limit the powers of one over-presumptuous bishop, confirm the rights of another bishop over his vicars, and selected candidates for holy orders. Leo's letter to the Council of Chalcedon in 451 dealt so effectively with the doctrine of the human and divine natures of the one person of Christ that the assembled bishops declared, Peter has spoken through Leo and affirmed his definition as orthodox Christian teaching. With similar strengths of spirit and wisdom, Leo negotiated with Attila when the Huns were about to sack Rome. He persuaded them to withdraw from Italy and to accept an annual tribute. Three years later, Genseric led the Vandals against Rome. Again, Leo negotiated. Unable to prevent pillaging by the barbarians, he did dissuade them from burning the city and slaughtering its inhabitants. He worked thereafter to repair the damage to replace the holy vessels in the desecrated churches of Rome and to restore the morale of the Roman people. Leo died in Rome in the year 461. I think that there are a lot of lessons in this story and I'm going to keep it light and say the moral here is make sure you attend all meetings because you may just be elected Pope unanimously whether you want to be or not. So may Saint Leo of Rome pray for us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the diocesan cycle of prayer tonight, we pray for the Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission of the Episcopal Church in Delaware. Pray for the Racial Justice and Reconciliation Commission. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of the Eastern Himalayas in the United Church of North India. Pray for the Diocese I now invite you to offer your own thanksgiving and petitions, either silently or aloud. I pray for healing for Jeff Meadows, Judy Upshur, Tom Meyer. Thanks, John. Please join with me in the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thy unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and hast promised through thy well-beloved Son 
that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen. May the divine help remain with us always and with, with our, our absent, absent brothers, brothers and, and sisters. sisters.